Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, today, I'm going to touch on a piece of medical gear that I really like, and yet there's a sector of the internet that hates it, and that is rats tourniquets. Let's get into it. Now, before we get into this, if you like this kind of content, please hit like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get more videos from me. And if you want to support the channel further than that, there is Ko-Fi, it's kind of like Patreon. You get a whole bunch of extra stuff, link for that down below. But let's get into Rats Tourniquets, some of the outrage and madness behind it, and the proper application of a Rats Tourniquet. So there's a sector of people that when they see Rats Tourniquets in a title of anything, they start foaming at the mouth, they beat their head against the keyboard, start beating the keyboard with their fists. Oh, they don't work and they're garbage and all that other stuff. The problem is they're wrong. Um, rat tourniquets work exceedingly well. Uh, they have a lot of benefits to them. So are there, there are studies that show that these rat tourniquets work exceedingly well. Uh, Cambridge is one of the more recent ones. I'll post the link to the conclusion of that study down below. But basically what it says is that there is no significant benefit of, of blood stopping uh, between the rats and cat tourniquet. There are other factors to take into consideration as well. Some of the studies that say that these aren't as good also caveat that with the amount of training that people had had on cat tourniquets versus the amount of training that people had had on rats tourniquets and that proper application is a big deal when it comes to any medical piece of medical gear. So that is what we're gonna go through today is proper application of these. Now, what is the benefit of a rat's tourniquet over, say, something like a windlass style tourniquet? Well, many people believe that these are easier to carry for EDC. I would tend to agree with them. Also, for the lay person, I believe that telling somebody to put this around a limb and wrap it as freaking tight as you can uh, is much easier to understand than Unvelcro, pull the Velcro tight, re-Velcro around, twist, 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 lock, pull the you know pull the leftover tail into the uh, into the clasp or into the plastic and lock it over or put the time tab over. There's, I, I believe that one explanation is considerably easier to understand for most people than the other. Now, do these have any other benefits other than subjective benefits like? people thinking that it's easier to carry and things like that. Those are subjective benefits. Um, objectively, these work better on smaller limbs, children, uh, small children, small limbs, and they also work better on animals like dogs. So objectively, these have benefits over windless style cat tourniquets. However, they do have a couple of things that uh, can be considered uh, a minor downfalls. One of them being that the pressure area is not as wide. Now that is mitigated if you correctly apply a rat's tourniquet. Another is that since you are pulling on essentially a flat bungee cord, that if you have blood on your hands, uh, if your hands are slippery or something like that, you can slide down this thing while you're applying it. Uh, so if you don't have a really solid grip, if you have really bloody hands or slippery hands, that can potentially be a downfall as it pertains to this. And again, studies show that there is no significant difference between the bleed stop of this and a cat. Uh, and, other, and again, other studies even show that they're the same. So they come in all different kinds of color. This is black, they have green, orange, all kinds of stuff, red. Here's a red one in one of the sleeves that you can carry it in. And this is one we're going to use today because I have a black shirt on so you can see what I'm doing. So it comes already, so it comes already looped like so. And essentially a three finger loop that's that's sort of the standard a three finger loop and the way I carry them and stow them is through the loop folded like that and either 
uh, rubber banded, say to a piece of kit or backpack or something like that in the pocket. Uh, in one of these, also people tend to carry these sometimes around their belt loops. That way they can just and pull it right out and get to work with it. So get your arm in there. Now we go as high as possible on the limb. There are a few reasons for this. Number one, if you have if you have long sleeve on and maybe you have a hit that you can't find, an injury that you can't find, you're not gonna take the time to cut the sleeve apart. To find the injury, you're just gonna go as high as you can and you're going to take care of whatever's below it. Also, multiple injuries. You're not going to go above an injury here and then above an injury here. You're gonna take care of multiple injuries in this area. Also, if it is a low injury, it is far easier to stop bleeding up here near the armpit above the bicep than it is down here where your two bones in your forearm are at. If this does not compress nearly as well as something like this. So you're going to go as high as you can and start pulling this around as tight as you can and you're going to layer it. Not layer it on top of each other ringlets as you go down and now they say three turns three wraps it's two and that's three and then you come through if you can do more do more then you come through you put it into this hook now this is where some people say that these can easily fall out of this hook Looky there, there's two hooks there. They don't fall out nearly as easily. And I don't know if you can see this, but I have rapidly lost color in this hand compared to this hand. Uh, I am, I have a injury there on my hand, but I definitely have no color in this. Um, and I feel no pulse. I know that's not the, the end all be all of tests, but I have no pulse. If you think I'm lying, then I don't know. You think I'm lying. Then of course to remove, you just pull it out of there, put it on, although I don't suggest removing tourniquets unless it is uh, at, at the point where emergency services has taken over and uh, they can mitigate bleeding after that. Again, rats tourniquets work very, very well. They have a bad rap on the internet, uh, but that does not mean that they don't work. Uh, they work well. I use both. I have cat tourniquets. I have rats tourniquets. I have a couple SWAT T tourniquets. Uh, I have a number of tourniquets that I have staged in various places, but I do have a bunch of these and these have saved lives. So that's it. Application of anything, application of your fundamentals when it comes to shooting, application of proper fundamentals when driving, application of proper application of medical gear. It's all important in order to successfully use that product. And that includes something like this, the rats tourniquet. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you want more videos from me. I will go ahead and put in the pinned comment and in the description where you can buy rats tourniquets in all of your favorite colors and different things that you can stow them in and things like that. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.